Hi, so in this video, we're going to start talking about conditional probability. Let's start with an example. So an uh, example of dice like we did before, what is the probability of obtaining a sum of 10 when rolling a pair of dice? The way I set this up uh, was to make a grid. So I'm going to pretend I have two dice, one is red and one is blue. So I'm going to put the possible outcomes of the red die like that and my blue die across. So I'm going to have like a grid. Three, four, five, six. Um, I'm going to put a grid here, and it has to be so that every uh, number of my grid, every little square of my grid, is going to represent the possible outcome of rolling a pair of dice. So you add the um, outcomes uh, and you get numbers. So how many ways can I get a ten? Well, I get a ten if I get a six and a four. That's one of them. If I get a double five. And there's another 6 and the 4 combination, right, depending on which die is the is 6. So I could have gotten the, the blue 6 and the red 4, or the, um, the blue uh, 4 and the red 6. And of course it has a double 5, so there are 3 possible ways out of a total of 36. There's 36 ways because um, there's a 6 by 6 grid, so the probability answer here would be uh, the probability is uh, 3 over 36, or 1 12th. Okay, I'm going to copy my grid, because I'm going to use it for my next example. Uh, so now it says, what's the probability of obtaining a sum of 10 when rolling a pair of dice? But now I'm going to say knowing that one of the dice is a 4. So, so this is called a condition of probability. The condition is knowing that one of them is a 4. Okay, so I'm going to copy my, my, my grid. I had it here. I'm going to make it smaller. It's a fit right there. Now I'm going to know um, if we have the extra information that one of the die is a 4. So the total is not 36 anymore, right? If, I, if, if you were told that one of the die is under a 4, um, what's the probability that the, the sum is a 10? Well, you don't have to consider all of them. You, you only have to consider, uh, you know it landed on either this row or in that column, right? Now you know there are only, um, if you count them, there's six across and six down, but they're not really 12 because I'm counting double the double, uh, I'm counting twice the double four. So there are really only 11 possible ways you could have gotten the uh, one of the dies of four. So this is why, that's why the grid is very helpful to visually uh, s capture this information, right? There's, there's only 11 ways um, possible where one of the die was a four. Now of those, the pro I find the probability that I got a, a sum of 10. So it's two, right? There's only two possible ways out of 11. So it's two out of 11. Over here, uh, the answer was 112. So it's a totally different, right? One over 12 versus two over 11. So knowing that um, one of them landed on the four changed probability for sure. So this is called a conditional probability. Um, the conditional probability of an event E, given that another event F already happened, is written as uh, the P of E, uh, this bar F, that's how we write it, okay? Um, so whenever we read this, we're going to read it, like, what is the probability of the event E happening, knowing that F already happened? Okay, it's going to have different contexts, but that's what it means. So here's a table, for example. Uh, a group of adults were sampled and found that the data uh, found the data in the following table. So there are males and females. They're left-handed and, and right-handed. You had the totals. So the event E is going to be the person selected is from this group is male. The uh, the event F is a person selected as left-handed. So I want to find a probability that the person selected is a male, given that the person is left-handed. So given that it's left-handed means that um, I can assume. And it lands on this row, right? I don't have to uh, worry about there's 100 people in this survey. I know the person was left-handed, so I had, I had to consider these 20, right? So the answer would be um, the number that is 20, and what's probably the person is a male. What is 12 then? So 12 over 20, right? So that's uh, 0 0.6, uh, 6 tenths, so 0 0.6. And now let's ask it with the, uh, the other reverse. Let me write it here at 0 0.6. Uh, now find the probability that the person is that is left-handed, given that the person is male. 
So now, uh, given this person is a male, means uh, I'm going to consider that I'm only living in this column. I should have had the, 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 the row on the other example. Sorry about that. So now I'm going to consider the 50 males, right? I'm, I know the person is a male. And what is the probability that the person is left-handed? So left-handed is, again, these 12, right? Out of the total, which is now only males, 50. So it's 12 out of 50. Um, that's uh, 24%, right? It's 24 over 100, so it's 0 0.24. So how you calculate the, from a table these conditional probabilities. Now, sometimes we don't have these tables, and, and we need a formula for this, and this is the formula for finding uh, the conditional probability of f given e. I wrote this one backwards. I don't know why. Sorry, I had e of f, e and f, f and e. I wrote here f and e. So the probability of f given e is the probability of E and F divided by the probability of E, okay? So um, this is a formula, and we're, we're going to see that we get the same result in the way I did it before. Um, and the interpretation here could be that we only consider the cases when E occurs, right? That's the, that's the denominator, right? Like that's, been, that's been happening, if you think about it over here. When I said it's uh, left-handed, I only, um, in my second example, given the person is male, I only consider these 50 where, where that event happened, right? So that's my denominator. And the numerator is 12, right? It's the, it's the when both happened, when male and left-handed. Um, so that's, this can be rewritten, that's the multiplication rule. It, well, written like that, we don't call it, this is the formula for finding the conditional probability. We call it the multiplication rule when we, when we multiply by uh, this in the denominator, so it shows up over here, and you, and you see it like this. So the probability of the event E and F happening, right, the event E and the event F happened, is going to be equal to the probability of E times the probability of F given E. So this is what is called a multiplication rule, but it just comes from this way of finding um, the, the condition of probability. So I'm going to use a formula in the example I just did before. So I'm going to, uh, I probably have it pasted here, let me be sure. No, I don't have it pasted. I had something else pasted. So let me, let me um, uh, paste it for a minute. Okay, so I got that screenshot here. This is from the other one. So what's the probability of E given F? So I have the letters changed here, but um, so let's uh, write it down. So the probability of, um, it would be, the, I have the probability of E given F. So the numerator would be the same, it's E and F, or F and E, so that would not be changing at all. It would be F and E, which is the same as E and F. But the denominator would be the probability of F, correct? So some way to remember this is the denominator uh, E goes with the condition part. Okay, so that's the way to remember if you need a way to remember it. So how do I find this? Uh, so I really know the answer, right? This, this is, I got this 60% just reading the column or the row, in this case, a row. Now I want to do this formula. So the probability of F and E. So here you have to read this, like, what's the probability that E and F happened uh, from the total? This is not the condition, so the numerator just says, what's the probability that E and F happened? That means that the person that was male and left-handed. So male and left-handed are 12, but out of the total in this case, so the probability of F and E, or E and F, would be uh, 12 over 100, okay? Now the probability of F, was the probability that F happened, it would be um, that is left-handed, so there are 20, right, out of the total, 20 out of 100. So when I implement this formula, uh, for these, the numerator is F and E, or, uh, so it's 12 over 100. And the denominator is probability of F, which is 20 over 100. So when you do this, uh, the 100s cancel, basically, right? You get 12 um, over 20. So you can divide them or cancel them, flip the denominator, uh, and you get the 12 over 20, which is the same thing we got before. So um, I'm just doing this just to show you that is the same thing that we got when we did it. We didn't need the formula when I did it over here. We just read, um, I didn't highlight it, but we're reading only this row, right? So it's 12 out of a 20. So when you have a, 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 call, a, a table like this, I, I think it might be called a contingency table, um, we don't need this formula. Uh, 